Hi, welcome to the new part. So in this series we are learning about the collections and we have just learned about the arrays. Now it's time to learn about array list. Before everything let's have a look what we are going to learn in this video. We will learn what is array list, what is the use of array list, how can we declare an array list, get and set data in array list, how can we get the data from array list and how can we set the data in array list. We will create a demo as usual. And at the last we will see should we use array list or not what are the recommendations of microsoft for array list array list is a type of collection which is available in system.collections namespace so basically this is the collection and it is available under system.collections namespace if you have to use array list you have to work with array list you have to use system.collections namespace in your file array list can store different type of elements so in previous few parts we learned about array and all we were learning about array was that the type of elements were same at all the places but here in the array list we can store different type of elements also size of the array list is decided dynamically so since we were working with array and while we were initializing an array we have to specify the size of that array here in case of array list you don't have to specify the size of array list Whenever you will add the new elements in array list, the size of this array list will be calculated dynamically automatically. The array list class is designed to hold heterogeneous collections of object. What is the meaning of heterogeneous? It means we can store different type of elements in one array list. So in same array list, in one array list, I can store integer element, I can store string element or I can store any type of element because the element type is objects and object is on top of everything so every type can be stored in objects that's why we can store string integer etc any type into array list let's see how can we declare an array list so declaration is simple first we have to provide the type so the type is array list and we have to provide the variable name that's how we can declare an array list. Don't forget to include the namespace which is system.collections in this scenario. Now let's see how can we initialize and assign the values to array list. Array list can be initialized using following ways. We have to declare the array list. Simply array list then the name of the variable equal to with the help of new keyword we can initialize the array list. We can assign values to array list using add or add range method so basically there are two methods these are used to add new values to this array list also you can assign the values while you are initializing it let's see all the things in demo and let's see how it works so let me create a new application for this let me open it in our editor okay great let me close this welcome file and let's open the program.cs file in this program.cs file first of all we have to use in the program.cs file we have to include a namespace which is using system dot collections and since we are working with array list so we have to create and declare an array list first array list then you can specify your variable name it may be anything suppose my array list or it may be anything as per your requirement that's it that's how we can declare an array list if we need to initialize it to initialize it it is very simple we can initialize it in the same line or we can initialize it in the next line also or at the later part of the program whenever you want to use it so basically we have to use new keyword and we have to type the array list that's how we can declare and initialize a new array list. Let's have a look on array list class. So array list class is available under system.collections namespace and this class also implements i enumerable interface, i list interface, i collection interface and i clonable interface. Let's have a look on the constructors of array list. So this one is parameterless constructor here and as a second type we can pass an i collection also 
and as a third part we can declare the capacity of array list what is the capacity of array list that we will learn in the next part of this tutorial now let's make it simple and let's declare an array list with a parameterless constructor let's see what is available as default in array list so here in array list we have a count the count is 0 and we do not have any value it is saying row the capacity is 0 count is 0 and these are few properties which are available for array list and these are the default values of all those properties okay now it's time to add few values to array list the first way is you can assign the values while you are initializing it how so in the same line using the curly bracket we can provide the values like this now to display the values on console i'm going to use for each loop so item and i can provide my collection name which is my array list in our case and here i can write my syntax to print the values let me remove this line now there are few things to understand over here let's see what is the type of this item the type of item is object it means all the element of this array list will be object you will see that we have assigned integer values to this array list still the type of the array list item is object since whatever you are assigning to this whatever you are adding the values to array list all those values will be converted to object similarly you can assign an string also so suppose i'm writing my name or you can assign a char character value also so any type which are available in dotnet you can assign them in one array list okay now let's press f5 let me remove this break breakpoint from here and let's press f so here on the console screen you can see that all the values which are available which we have assigned are displayed on the console so these are the integers these are the string these are the character but in this scenario all of these are treated as object so this is also object this one is also object all of these are objects so this was the first way to assign the values while we are initializing it now if you don't do this we have to add the values at runtime how to do that so for that we have two methods first one is add and the second one is add range first let's have a look on add method to use add method we have to use the name of array list so this is the name of array list you have to press dot add and in the add method you can provide your value so suppose the value is 1 whenever you will use add method a new value will be added in the array list and the count of the array list will be increased the size of the array list will be increased whenever you will add a new value let's press f5 and let's see how many elements are there in the array list since we have added only one element that's why on the console screen we can see only one element now let's add a few more elements to this okay i have added my name just to specify the heterogeneous data type and here you can write one character also let's press f5 now so all of these are available on the console screen and it doesn't matter whatever the type of size is it will always convert all those elements into object and then it will store all of them into itself and now let's have a look on add range method to use add range method we need a collection we have to pass a collection in add range method and all the elements which are available in that collection will be added into array list so before that let's create a collection and simply i'll be using an array so let me declare an array here and let's assign a few values in this array you can see that an array can store only same type data only homogeneous type of data and if i need to add all the elements of array into array list then there is a simple method which is add range let's see how to try that my array list dot add range and in this add range method you can pass the collection the collection is array in our scenario okay so now as per the logic there are uh, one two three and five eight elements are available in array list let's press f5 
here on the console screen you can see that all of the elements are available by now we have learned how to add the values to this array list how to get the values from array list now if now let's see how can we update an value in array list so basically to update the values we can use the index feature okay and to use the index feature we have to provide the name of the collection and then in the square bracket we have to provide the index so suppose i'm writing zero index so i want to update the values at the first index and now you have to provide the new value so suppose new value is okay so what will happen now 1 2 3 4 5 this this integer will be assigned at the first index let's press f5 so here you can see that on the first index which is zero index and the value is updated if you need to fetch a particular value from the early list then also you can use the index feature using the name and the index you can get that value from the array list and you can use that in your program there is one interesting question about array list should we use array list as per official website of microsoft we should not use array list for new development instead we can use list of type t collection okay if we have to work with data of objects still we can use list of objects so the main feature of array list was saving the data of heterogeneous data types and ultimately we are saving the data of object types so if you have to work with object types then you can use list collection this is a generic collection if you guys are new to CSR and you do not know about this list collection then do not worry in our upcoming videos we will be learning about list collection also but if you know then you must understand that we should not use a list for the new development we can use list of t type for the required why should we not use array list in our program because array list gives you performance issue that's why we should not use this one that's all in this part thank you for watching don't forget to hit the like button of the video tell me your feedback in the comment section if you like this video you can share it subscribe to my channel thank you for watching have a great day